Mm -hmm. Hey all. Everyone. Look at y'all popping in. Cool. All right. Well, seems like this was good timing. So we are going to talk a little bit about the solar eclipse and the new moon. But really, we're just going to kind of talk about one one aspect that really that really is grinding my b-hole right now just saying hello hi guys how are all of you <laughs> um has anybody been feeling eclipse energy like send a heart or something or say hello yeah i'm me if you guys have been feeling all this energy i'll be honest eclipse season is not the most fun for you girl it's not I, energetically, I fare poorly during this time to, to be, like, brief about it. Um, yeah, it's because these are portal times, man. They're like level up times. These are opportunities to really do some big work, to leave behind some old patterns and to basically discover what I like to call, um, well, that word is really not going to escape me right now. Jesus. Basically like shortcuts, you know, they're like shortcuts to the next stage in your evolution. Like the way that cycles of time work is they go round and round, real fucking slow like, right? And, you know, I mean, there's down tons of different cycles and we don't, we don't know what they all are, but it's like, a lot of them move really fucking slowly. And so there are going to be cycles of time that you go through and cycles of experience that that time will fill in, okay? And... And every kind of pie, you know, like piece of the pie, it, you can kind of think about it like the astrological wheel. You know, it's 360 degrees. You know, think of the globe. Think of the circle, right? Y'all all remember this shit. And then you divide it into 12 pieces. And in every single one of those pieces, there's something to learn. There's something specific. There's a type of energy that you can be shaped by, molded by. And yeah, like... You know, I posted that thing today about astrology not being the fucking answer because it's not. It's like science. It's giving us tools. It's giving us words to describe our experience. It's not solving problems for us. It's letter like giving us data. It's giving us information. We're the problem solvers. And we all need to understand that. You know, please don't be looking to... Folks like me or people who provide information about the stars to, like, make it better. It's not going to make it better. If you don't do anything with the information, then we continue to participate in the same cycles, you know, over and over and over again. And this is something that I'm being called out here really hard because, and this is something that, like, basically points to the reason why eclipse season is super difficult for me is because, you know... I feel like I have done a lot of growing in my life. It feels like my life has been one long, large, like, okay, are you going to grow experiment? Like, and it's constant and it never feels like it's letting up. So that's a thing. But so, you know, when I constantly feel like I am growing, when I get the opportunities to level up big time and leave a lot of trash behind, like... That's uncomfortable for me, y'all. That's scary. That's like, that's requiring me to step all the way into my power. That's requiring me to be at a level of release that I'm not quite yet cool with, you know? Which is interesting. Um, which aspect is it? There's an aspect of this chart. Maybe I'll remember it later. Um, there's an aspect of this chart that's like, you know, things are like easier to release right now if you choose to. But also, oh, it's like, uh, so the eclipse is uh, opposing 
Pluto and Capricorn, right? And Pluto is very concerned sometimes with us, like, protecting ourselves and, and like, hey, 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 that's something I'm not familiar with. I'm not comfortable with that, blah, 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 you know? It really wants to protect and attack a little bit. Um, but we're being asked, like, I think, drop the fear. Drop the fear around whatever it is that's, like, asking you, hey, be big. You're capable of it right now, you know? Like, I like to talk about this a lot in terms of quantum physics. It's just my idea of how the highest self works. So it's like we have a highly idealized version of ourselves, maybe outside of space and time. Let's say the cosmic blueprint of who we are. The way I like to liken that is like how the cosmic blueprint for the mighty oak tree lives fully when it's still just a baby acorn, right? So we as a human, you know, incarnated on this planet, we have the cosmic blueprint for the highest self. So there's a, that means there's a form out there that exists, right? And you can move through space and time towards it. And I also believe you can vibrate at the level to bring it into the present moment. And like, I think when the eclipse season comes around, Yes, bench. You hear me, Cheza. <laughs> like, when these eclipse seasons come around, these are the doorways where your highest self, like, opens this big uh, cosmic door, and it's almost like there's all this gushing wind, and you can't see behind them, and they're just like, hey, you can come this way. You just got to let go of that narrative. That's literally it. So come this way. And it's, it's so shocking because what it is beckoning to us is a completely new operating system almost overnight. That's kind of what it's, it's, it's showing us, I think, on an energetic level. Obviously, none of this is going on consciously, but this is what I feel like is happening, which is why we freak out and we get anxiety and we feel rushes of energy because it's just like, it's tantalizing, but it's terrifying at the same time because... You're familiar with this pie graph, you know? You're familiar with this dimension of going through the wheel, you know? So to be like, or let's just say he's from above, you know, the, or the highest self from above is like opening this portal up, like, hey, you can come up here, right? So you have no clue what's up here. None clue, you're very comfortable here. Most of us do not want to leave here, no matter how much we claim we do. You know, better the devil I do know than the devil I don't, right? I mean, it's great logic if you never want to, like, evolve. Like, let's never try anything new because there's the unknown out there, right? And I think the whole point of, like, the hero's journey, like, what we're here to do on the, like, if you want to call it the spiritual quest, is, like, to take up, like, our shit. Like, take up our work and, like, do it. Like, go for it. Like... Go out into the unknown. Go to the underworld and slay the dragon, you know, and, and gather the wisdom that comes from that quest and move forward and, and go tackle a bigger dragon. Like the reason why so many of us feel like we are incapable of changing this world is because so far we've been incapable of changing ourselves. And it's due to the fear. You know, fear is what's holding us back. And the eclipse, like op opposing Pluto and Capricorn is like, Drop the fear. Drop the fear. And, and that's literally the, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it is literally the simplest task you'll ever be asked. Because once the fear is legitimately dropped, you know, the weight actually does lift off of our chests. And it's because our heart just got so light. Like, it's almost like it's full of helium. And then we're the fool. Like, it's carrying us forward. Like, I love the fool card so much because of his body language. And, like, he's hurling himself off towards the abyss, you know? It's like, and he, do, he doesn't need to look around. And he doesn't need to listen to the sweet, innocent, kind, logical, white little dog that's like, dude, it's scary down there. Like, don't go. Like, we can't see where we're going to go. Like, you don't know what's down there. That's, you know, it's pure. It's not malicious, but that is fear. And we need to call it out for what it is. 
You know, we need to accept, okay, I do have blockages towards being my best self. I do have blockages towards leveling up. I am uncomfortable with the unknown. I don't know what comes, how much responsibility I have to take on by being a better person. And those things are all true, you guys. Like, I am terrified of all of those things. I, I Living in the energetic, you know, near rubbish pile of a human being that is the result of feeling this very, very intensely over the past, like, I don't know, like 48 hours. But, you know, if we can keep our hearts, like, open, our minds open to the possibility that everything we leave behind, you know, what we, what we usher in as a result of simply releasing, it's going to blow our fucking minds, y'all. Like, we have to be at that point where we can at least conceptualize and see in other people, people who take great risks and people who make big moves. You know, the lives they have now. I don't mean to compare ourselves to anyone. I'm not saying that, but everybody finds someone inspirational. None of them did that by, by listening to the fear. You have to surrender fear. You surrender fear on the altar of action, Watch your life fucking change. And I, I've lived moments like this before. I'm in one of the, the moments where I'm, I'm saying this to me. My highest self is saying this to me, you know? And so I'm sharing it with you. This is the message that's being channeled through at this moment because I need it. And I got to believe that there are others out there who resonate with where I'm at and, and need it too. And almost every astrologer, everybody who's like intuitive that I know is dealing with some sort of pattern that needs to be released, you know, um, and it's very hard to do that. Y'all, I get that. I get that. But what if everything you leave behind pales in comparison to what you usher in by releasing this pattern? Uh, one of my favorite astrologers, Sonia Francis, was saying this in one of her videos. What if we spent 5% more energy that we're currently using to, like, evaluate the problem, evaluate the pattern, think about the pattern, to just completely fuck off the pattern and focus simply on what empowers us in the present moment? So many of us... We feel like, okay, and here's another thing. Chiron is retrograde right now and it's in Aries. That's the wounded healer in the principal male archetype sign, okay? So we're needing to deal with the kind of more internal and subtle wounded masculine energy in all of us. And this boils down mostly, I feel, to try and control and dominate our lives, like to make things happen a specific way and to like really you know, like really do a number on our problems and really evaluate our shit and really pour over our trauma and all this shit. And I think this is a very, uh, another aspect of like the kind of wounded masculine energy. It like tries to, you know, out of compensation, assert that it's strong. Like it's a very forced, like I have the, I have the ability to just muscle through this and I can analyze my way through this problem. And, and it's very like grumpy little boy kind of energy, you know? So we're being asked to deal with this. We're being asked to see where this is in our life. Where are we impatient? That's another thing that keeps coming up in all of my readings. Everybody's getting the wheel of fortune. Everybody's getting the hanged man. It's like, y'all, we got to learn patience. That impatience energy, that why isn't my blessings here now, or why aren't my blessings here now? Why didn't that job show up yet? Why isn't my perfect partner manifesting before my eyes? I'm doing all the love rituals. I'm shoving a fucking chakras, pink rose quartz, you know, dildo up my yoni and like, what the fuck? Where is he? Right? Like a lot of us are feeling that way. I know like half the chicks I talk to, like we all have complaints like this and it's just like, you know, what, what's that impetulant little boy energy in you? Like calm down. Maybe you got some, 
some stepping up to do before you become the energy that's truly like going to serve the partnership you're really destined for or that you're really working to attract to yourself. Let's, let's take destiny out of it because I do believe we set ourselves up for being able to participate in whatever quality of relationships we attract to ourselves. So it, it's, the result is fate, but it's based on your actions. So take that with a grain of salt, if you will. I know, I know the debate is still wildly raging on whether we have free will or not, but I'm sorry, y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say we got choices. Like, obviously some shit just happens as a result of those choices and as a result of those big cycles of time and chaos, what have you. And we could call that fate. We could call that a deterministic world, but I choose to believe we have autonomy and we have choices to make. We have decisions and we have crossroads and we have these come to Jesus moments, you know, where the, the heavens open up. Okay, it's fucking ace energy. It's ace energy as shit. Like, let me just pull an ace out so we can take a peek. All right, ace of cups, perfect for cancer. Hello. It's like God coming out of the sky and being like, Here's your new opportunity. Here's a new way of existing in the world. Here's a new way of relating emotionally to others. Here's a new way of processing your feels. Here's a new way of like not making your feels about anyone else. And also not taking their projected feels upon yourself. So many fresh perspectives, right? And when we get the ace cards, it's an opportunity to completely shift the way we see and have dealt with that realm of life. And that's how I see souls are um, eclipses. If I've said so, I've kept doing this for some reason, saying solstice when I mean eclipse. So if I've done that, just know it was a flub of the tongue. But I believe that eclipses are offering us this same kind of out of the heavens. Here's the opportunity. Like, are you going to move from a place of fear? Are you going to move from a place of wonder? Here's what I want. I want more of us to operate out of a sense of curiosity. I want more of us to connect with the inner child that, 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 that is the natural scientist, the one that asks questions, the one that wants to know, hey, what the fuck is up there? You know what? I've done, I've done this. I've done, I've run this, this wheel. God knows, maybe 12 times now. Who fucking knows how many years I've been going through all these same cycles? I want to know what's up there. What's up? Okay, you, so you're saying all I have to do is like release this pattern. So I have to just like stop giving this pattern and this narrative my energy and I can come up, come up there? That's it? Okay. And I also don't need to fear. Okay. I mean, in theory, it sounds very simple, right? But these end up being very difficult things for us to do. And why is that? That's my big question. You know, that's what I've been struggling with this eclipse season. What, why is it so hard to wonder? And maybe it's a part of the cultural narrative we're all kind of participating in where where security looks a certain way and, and we all kind of, you know, are just attached to that so hard that it feels like sacrificing a part of our current narrative in any way, you know, breaks apart the whole scaffolding. And in a sense, it totally does. A lot of times you have a tower moment when you accept these things. And I don't want to like gloss over that fact. You know, you m might need to see everything fall away. But I often think that like when we lose everything, that's when, that's the evidence that something new is coming. Because we usually don't choose to lose everything. You know, we might come to decisions that result in us losing everything. But you know, a lot of the times if we knew in retrospect that that's what it would result in, we wouldn't choose that same thing, right? So like there's this other element and maybe that's the element of fate. At least that's how it feels to me. But I don't know, man. I just, I want to challenge us. I want to challenge us all. Like, can we move from a place that's not fear 
So I feel like that's that's what that's why we're struggling in relationships so much is we're afraid. We're afraid of the consequences of being our true selves with everyone. And I I get that. I I, I, I fear judgment all the time even though there's a conscious program that I consistently run whenever that fear comes up. The I don't care asshole vibe, you know? Like, I still fear the judgment coming anyway, right? Luckily, I feel like the more I align with my truth, I get my my three of my three of swords vibe pumping, at least my interpretation of the three of swords, which is when you know yourself and you are aligned with your truth and you speak that truth in love, no matter what befalls you, no matter what betrayal, no matter what relationship loss, no matter what heartbreak you have to endure as a result of you speaking your truth, your heart will be fortified and strong enough to handle it. And you'll come out of it better for it. And one of my favorite spells that I've ever written was when I speak my truth, what's truly meant for me comes closer to my present moment. So meaning when things fall away from us, it means it didn't, it wasn't meant to be there or it's no longer meant to be there. It's no longer serving our evolution. And I believe, you know, this eclipse is in the North Node and this is all about our soul's evolution. So it really does make sense, the whole like level up opportunity and our highest self kind of coming through like, yo, you don't usually experience me the, this way as like this energetic kind of vortex of energy that's like hey you can come this way there's something cool up here but you're not gonna know what it is until you come through so come through i don't know like it just you know it's different than how i normally interact with my highest self so yeah so if you're feeling if you're feeling wavy baby like it's okay it's okay i've been ultra shooketh the past two days so <laughs> it's always in the works y'all I definitely want to write something this year I'd love to do something small and release that this year and then work on something bigger very soon but you know man I just love y'all and I you know I love myself and I I see myself like going through so much right now and like there's there's a part that's been really cool and it's it's intensified since I've just a little bit I've started practicing more mindfulness where it's like I can really identify with the witness instead of Jennifer Joseph you know I love the vehicle don't get me wrong like I definitely identify with myself myself you know like this incarnation of me but there's just been some really precious moments where I'm 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 able to come outside myself and see myself as the wit like from the witness's perspective. And I'm just going through all this deep, deep shit. It's it's pulling up stuff from so long ago and, and it's <sighs> the strings are all being connected. And it hurts. It hurts to have it all brought up, y'all. It it's not easy. I'll never claim, you know, the great work is easy. If it were easy, we'd all do it and the world would already be pretty damn amazing. Y'all wouldn't have to be fucking on this mobile device listening to, to one of us, you know, talk a lot of their opinion on top of stuff that they've experienced, you know, in order to gain more insight in our own situation. Maybe we'd all be just a little more connected to the now and the present moment. And we'd see these opportunities when they come up. And we'd, we'd, we'd buy the ticket. We'd take the ride. We'd listen to that impulse. We'd, we'd leap when we hear the, the word jump, you know? Like, I don't know. Um, I know it's really abstract and we can't really imagine a life like this, but I, I just... I just wonder about this whole stream of consciousness experience. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the movie Waking Life. Anybody in here seen that movie? It's a very interesting philosophical movie about dreams. 
and about a lot of other concepts and about life and about death. And it, it just kind of fades from scene to scene. And um, the main character is kind of, he's liminal in the whole experience. And um, I don't know, you just, you see him wake up and you see him arrive and you see him leave. And it just felt like, actually that one's a scanner darkly. It's the same animation style though. The one with Keanu and Winona Ryder. But the whole point, I think, is, like, the idea of, like, life and death and, you know, being in altered states and dreaming. Like, it's just conscious experience. And I, on a level, I feel like we're, we're, we're just supposed to, like, watch it happen and not judge it so goddamn much. And I know that seems simplistic, but I'm, like I, I've said to you guys before, I'm getting back into Buddhism and Zen in a big way recently, and it just, that kind of is a principle that they've been fucking with for a long time. You know, just allowing things to happen, allowing things to arise and to fall away. You know, they have these principles about attraction and aversion. So the things that we very much want to experience, like pleasure and, you know, fun and joy and peace and all that, you know, as well as aversion, the things that, you know, disgust us and we get angry about and all that shit. Like both are, you know, you're delineating from the middle way, which is they're both here. They both exist. Obviously we have choices in how we behave, right? But in terms of what comes up, like that's what comes up. I feel like the more we stand in the middle, free of judgment, we have the tools. I think we have the tools to like connect and 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 intuit what the moment needs and requires. I just god, I fucking think anim like humans are just like a magnificent animal and we you know, our instincts are insane and this this whole thing, like the intuition and imagination, these are insane, magical things. And I feel like the more we're in the present, the more we get the experiences of synchronicity and hearing the intuition and being kind of connected to what we actually want to do versus operating under really again the inter the internal judge which i feel like if culture is an operating system the internal judge is the is the hard drive that makes it go through us and it it, it affects every part of our life so now we feel like this this being is like I don't know, this this archetype within us is just trying to keep us in alignment with what everybody else expects from us. And, and you know, he's just trying to run the program. He just wants to run the program. It's not that he's right, but we have this experience as if, and I got to masculinize him for some reason, but that's just what it feels like. Energy of judgment does feel very masculine to me. Maybe that's my own personal experience, but whatever. We'll move on. Um... Yeah, like, I just feel like if we can, you know, open the portal to the new operating system, I don't know. I just think that, like, maybe we get whole new experiences kind of without trying to. And, man, like, I don't know. What are we so fearful for? What do we all have, what do we all have so desperately to hold on to, you know? Where, where in any of our lives is there not room to take risk to make it better? To level up, to like explore new territory. You know? I'm so curious about what life is like without giving my past energy. 
and giving what I've gone through energy and giving the people who've hurt me in the past energy. I wonder what life is like like that. What if we could just give up the pattern? What if we could just release it? What if releasing it is just deciding not to give it any more energy? What if it all naturally falls away? What if? I don't know. I want to try it. I think, I think I'm being asked in a big way to try just releasing, you know, don't tell yourself I need to forget, you know, just spend that energy on what could empower you right now. That's like, and that comes from being in the present again, checking in with yourself and knowing what, you know, what could empower you right now. That only happens when you're right here, right here in this moment, like, like a fresh little baby, you know, like the fucking sun riding that white horse naked as hell, right? Like he's still got the feather on his head, which is important to remember. So does the fool. It's not that memory ever goes away. So you don't have to pretend like you've got to forget it. We carry that with us, but it's not going to lead us forward. No, it's in our minds, but we also use our minds as a tool, not a weapon against ourselves. You know, we leave it in the past where it belongs. It's not going anywhere. We don't have to revisit that. Of course, it's always going to be a part of your story. Of course, it's not going away. But you can feed your current desires, your current passion, your current state of empowerment, instead of focusing on that old disempowerment and that like wounded little boy who's trying to muscle it, muscle it under his control. Like, I'm going to make sure that never happens again. How about you just never participate like that again? That's releasing it. Versus, mm, I'm going to dominate the problem. That's, that's that Chiron and Aries shit that we're being challenged on right now. Because I know me, fuck, I'm an analyst. I'm an analyst personality type. I'm a double, double Virgo. They're the highest, like, analyzing signs in the Zodiac, like... I and I and I count myself a problem solver, but my silly little mind thinks the more I think about it from different angles, the more I can find the way in which I can alter and make sure that never happens again. And the way I could technically manipulate the situation, you know, it's not like a it's not like a really malicious manipulation, but like, how can I shape this to go the way I want in the future? Versus just like dropping the vibe of whatever that energy was. You can say that shit, y'all. I think that works. Whatever that fucking energy is, I would like to release that. Take as much time as you need, universe. But we're just like, how about my part of the pact is to never go back there intentionally. Or if I do, course correct as soon as I catch myself. And your part of the deal is that you're going to allow me to level the fuck up and get the fuck over this pattern. Deal? Deal. I kind of feel like spells are that. They're like binding, you know, our, our lives and our outcomes with the universe. At least I tend to work a lot of my spells in an if-van kind of structure. Especially that's really helpful for framing painful situations. Like one on another one of my favorite spells is like I only accept pain or no because pain happens regardless. It was like I only accept suffering if it's in like if it's in service of an accelerated growth path. That's the phrase I wanted earlier. <laughs> the solstices offer us accelerated growth paths, and y'all catch me saying that growth is not always fucking fun because we pay for growth with pain. That's just part of that. So 
Another thing to keep in mind, like, releasing this stuff doesn't make it any easier, you know, to deal with everything we've got going on in our, in our, in our immediate world, you know. We still could be having, in the physical world, a tower moment where we can't see shit, where everything's crashing and falling away. But, like, write that spell that says, when everything's crashing and falling away and leaving me and I see nothing around me, that means everything that I've ever wanted is on its way to me right now. It's a good spell, I think. You know? I uh, listened to, y'all, I've been on a Duncan Trussell podcast binge recently. He has been putting out some hot fire flames recently with his guests. And I listened to the newest one with Taryn Summer, who's this really cool. I've not actually heard of her. I have no clue who she is outside the context of this podcast. But she's somebody who uses AI to create music. And then she, like, edits and composes and writes the lyrics. For the music, like it's so crazy what she does. So I'm gonna look her up and see what she's all about um, in the future. But what? God damn it! I always go into that describing somebody, and then I'm so far off where I was going with it. I'm like, what was I about to talk about? Damn. So yeah, Duncan Trussell, great podcast recently. What was I just saying? Can anybody remind me? Of what This is live, y'all. Woo. <laughs> I keep saying solstice. I see I don't I don't know what that is. Ooh. Maybe oh. <clears throat> so the solstice for your girl. I might have made a pact with my higher self that I broke pretty damn quickly. So eclipse season for me is about like, yo bitch, you were supposed to do this on the solstice. What the fuck? That's why you're struggling so goddamn hard in your own britches. My fucking goodness. Well, there's that. And yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ruthie. <laughs> Hot fire shit. It's like, uh, oh yeah. Yeah, just, I'm loving all his podcasts recently. What about Taryn? What was she saying that was so fucking cool? Ugh, oh well. Whatever. The bunny trail led me to that little realization, so I guess that was important. Y'all get to see me doing a lot of these moments, which is interesting. I am glad that I save all this shit because I've had a few moments where I'm just like, oh, that issue was all about my mom, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. That's, that's where having an open heart, I think, really comes into play with all these situations. It's like, be humble. Listen to what's being said to you. Listen to what you say to you. You know, if you don't like the whole concept of the highest self, although I doubt anybody who's listening to this, like, really despises it, but, like, if you don't like that, that's fine. But if you tune in, go within, you'll find something, a part of you, that feels like it's saying what you need to do, okay? If you're, if you're doing your best to, like, align with what you truly want, you can trust that voice. You know, I think, I think we can have the judge go in, and it really is a mental process. But, like, the, the intuition feels, you know, you get the, you get the feeling of the information, while maybe also, you know, experiencing it coming to you as a thought but it feels different you know it feels kind of good and maybe scary when you get an intuitive inkling versus like usually if you're getting like a oh, you shouldn't do that and it's just like you know the policeman who lives in your head being like you're a naughty that just never feels good 
that's a, that's something to be con, um, connected to during cancer season is that the nature of our emotions are an like they're an early warning system. They're basically there to like let us know what we're attracting to ourselves, and 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 they're also there to let us know what our current thoughts and therefore belief systems, what kind of feelings they generate. And if, and if you're feeling negatively about your thoughts, you know, and if, if the feelings that are coming up are, are not good feelings, you don't feel good, like, that's the result of some bad thinking and some bad beliefs. And so our emotions are there to, like, give us a feeling, a physiological response that's like, dude, tune in. Something's not right because you don't feel good about this. What's going on in your head is making you feel like crap. And that, what's going on in your head is not changing your external surroundings. So why do you all of a sudden feel bad? There's no outside stimulus for you to feel bad. You just created this sensation. So check yourself before you wreck yourself because, again, like I said, early warning system, if you continue to vibrate at those emotions, you start to pull in the kind of energy that comes into your body and wants to be physical energy, so wants to make you behave. And if you're moving from a place of like, let's say fear, what you decide to do will be seeding more and more situations that will bring you the experience of fear. You know, you're not gonna quell fear by moving out of fear. Yeah, that's a big one. Fear will get you, y'all. Fear will get you real hard. Yep. Release is a major theme. Letting go of fear is a major theme. Being open to change. Being curious. Releasing what you know. Releasing what you're familiar with sacrifice it you know if if like if somebody put it to you blank like plainly so you can take your old shitty life or your old shitty pattern of experiences that keep perpetuating themselves in the same relationships and the same conflicts with the same types of people or the same gender or the same family member or whatever you you just have to give me that and I'll give you like, and you just, you have to give me your participation in that. So the keeping it alive through the storytelling and the remembering and the constantly going back there and giving the whole situation energy, you give me that. I give you brand new, fresh life. You don't get to know what it is, but it's brand new and it's fresh and it'll be better than that. I don't know. I really feel like if that was guaranteed to us, like let's say some, I like to say uh, the programmer, because we kind of, like if, I don't know. If we're creating, if we're creating intelligence, I don't know. There's another like computer programmer out there somewhere who's created our simulation. Anyway, that's a little matrixy, but still low key, like feel that's real. Anyway, um, you know, what if like we were in, what if we were in this great big simulation and what you've been experiencing emotionally your entire life, you know, that was just like, that was just like an add on that you unknowingly selected, right? And then the computer programmer just like appeared to you and was like, hey dude, like, you know, so that's what this is. This is like a simulation and because you've just kept opening that file, that's why you keep getting all those experiences. So if you just delete that file, like give that to me, like I will, I will, you know, control all delete. We'll make sure this is gone, gone, gone. Then you get like a new experience in the matrix, but you don't get to know what it is like, but it'll be, it'll be better than that. Do you want to do that? Or do you want to keep doing this shitty thing that you already know exists? That's also shitty. You know, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like in that scenario, we'd be like, okay, let's do the bigger thing. Like, cause in this, in this simulation, like essentially death's probably not a problem for you. You don't have to be that fearful of the situation. He just explained the whole game to you. He's like, here's just this one shitty file that you're hanging out in. You can have an unknown one. That's for sure better. If you just give me that, 
I think we'd all do it. I'm pretty fucking sure we'd all do it. Be like, okay, yeah. I don't know what's coming, but you say it's going to be better? All right, cool. Let's do that thing. You can't be that bad. You just told me, you know, what this situation was and that I could just delete it if I don't like that and get something new. Meaning, if that's something that I want to level up from one day, I can control all, delete that, release that, move on to something else. See, that's where we don't realize that the difference between us and highly successful people is their ability to control, alt, delete, and move on when they reach something that's no longer working for them anymore. They just recognize, okay, got to scrap that. We can't be attached to it. We can't take that personally. We can't be like, oh, this failure is my fault and blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, I just reached the edge of that dimension. Let's scrap that piece of paper. Boom. New one. I feel like everybody who is doing like next level, high level, you know, you can't even imagine how they've gotten to the realm that they've gotten to. It's like they've just figured out where the secret ladder is. It's like not even that special. They got one thing and that's the tool that's helping them move from level to level to level throughout their entire lives. It's like non-attachment to your, the result of your work. Just knowing that you need to do your work. That's a huge principle from the Bhagavad Gita, which is an, uh, an ancient Hindu text. It's part of the Vedas. And, you know, Krishna tells Arjuna, the main character, he's like, you have a right to your work. You do not have a right to the result of your work. What happens is going to happen. You're just meant to keep doing what you feel like is right to do. You free of the policeman in your head. That judgment archetype run in someone else's program. <laughs> but yeah, y'all. Solstice. I said it again. Eclipses. God damn. Eclipses are a crazy time and. I think there's just a lot of ripe opportunity to have fresh new perspectives and to, to, to experience life in a new way. Like, you know, I say this all the time and I know it's, it's easier said than done, but like if you could replace like one belief system with something that's more empowering, you can't possibly know the ripple out effect that that will have in your life because if you adjust one belief system to something that's more pop, let's just say to something that makes you feel something that you actually want to feel, meaning you'll continue to attract that, that's a cyclical improvement, you know? That's the gift that keeps on giving energetically. Which is why I always think to myself, like, God damn, Jennifer, like, every change you're being invited to make promises an infinite spiraling out of improvement in your life. Like, why are you so attached to the way things have been? Just let go. Just release it. Just release it. Stop feeding the things that you don't want to grow in your life. I think it's very easily, like, condense down to that. Stop feeding the things you do not want to grow in your life. And that's energy. That's time. That's money. That's your peepers. You know, what you put your eyes on. Get your eyes off your ex's social media right now. Stop. Release. Don't feed. Don't feed. Back there. Okay? You know, we've gone through, we're going through so many retrogrades at this point, And it's like, slow the fuck down and take it internal. You know? When things leave, again, that's because your bright future is on its way to you. And I'm not saying, like, immediately, like, oh, if I let go of, like, 
if I finally let go of my ex or that really negative situation that happened with my friend or, you know, what happened, you know, in my family home growing up that wasn't cool, whatever, like, damn, with the train of thought stopping on me today, God bless me. It's okay. <laughs> Gotta coach myself sometimes, y'all. I was not having a good couple of days. <laughs> I'll be real, real with y'all. But it's okay, you know? The end of it all, like, we're not alone, you know? We've got people. We've got like minds. You know, and I really feel like, for me... None of y'all has to do this. And anybody want, who wants to can say, Oh, you like talking to an imaginary friend? Like, cool. I don't care. I like interacting with my highest self. Like she can talk back to me. It helps. You know? That's why I have a matron goddess. It's because I have felt, you know, energy that did not feel like me. And I don't know. In those moments, I feel very held and embraced and loved and I can actually ask for that to come through and it happens doesn't happen immediately always but like I'll get like this wind I feel it's like in the fucking I know it's so trash according to history but Disney's Pocahontas when the wind fucking whips through her hair like that's what it always feels like when my matron goddess is like around as far as I'm concerned as far as my experience goes and you know, whether it's the guides, the ancestors, like who the fuck ever, the world in general, the spirit of life, I don't care what it is. Like, I just feel not alone when I remember that I'm not, you know? And I think we really all can feel that way if we want to. And I don't care if it's all in my head. I kind of think the whole world's all in my head. So that doesn't really bother me. I love it when people try to insult me like that. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not so divorced from my inner child that I have a problem playing pretend. I don't have a problem imagining things that I want for myself and daring to believe that I can make them real. Sorry, not sorry. I won't be embarrassed and I'll never be ashamed of it. That's just tea. <laughs> well, you guys, I think that's all I have to share with this eclipse, this new moon. The new moon kind of gets eclipsed by the eclipse, just FYI. I will say that according to popular thought in astrology, the intentions that you set tonight these will work in your life for the next two years. So if you're going to Set something. Make it be a, a big goodie, you know? Something that you know will take time, but that you really, really want to level up into, you know? Imagine, like, potentially that you can visualize part of that dimension up there that you're being invited to. What if you could? Would you maybe spend a couple of minutes a day imagining what your life could be like how that bitch operates, you know, who's in that person's life, what kind of things they do, what kind of people they hang out with, who they know, you know, what they're up to, how they're creatively expressing themselves, what they're pursuing, how they're helping. Imagine a world of your own, you guys, like, what if it could come true? What if it could come true? What if you play some role in creating the world around you. I dare to imagine, to believe that we do. I think the world is mental. And most of it's up to you. <laughs> At least in terms of your own experience. So with that, I'm going to say that I love you all so much. Thank you all for holding space for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. If you didn't catch the whole thing, 
know that this is a video that would be uploaded on my $10 a month level tier and that gives you access to literally every live I'll ever do, every video and every post I'll ever upload on the Patreon blog, which it's still a new thing. If you guys love me, just stay fucking tuned, I swear to God. Like, I've got some huge fucking things planned and it takes time and I'm learning how to integrate doing more and different work in my current schedule. But I've got so much to share and so much I want to put out into the world. And yeah, Patreon is like a really cool way for me to do that. So if you guys want to check that out, it's just patreon.com slash natural magics. Um, I keep my Etsy link in my shop or my shop link in my bio just because it's easy for everybody. But should be pretty easy to find me on there. Um, I'm also doing a eclipse batch of all my blends. Uh, I was smoking some moon before I got started. Okay, love that. If you're anti mullen and Damiana, because I know some people are not into those herbs, get on get on this. Okay, okay. Ruthie, I saw that. You're such a babe. Is it 22? Or is that the next level up? I think that one's for my, um, the $22 level is to get my monthly astrological month ahead tarot reading. And, and that, and that tier you get that and all my lives. So like this one you'll have access to, to Ruthie, just so you know. Um, <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. You were just saying that you signed up for it, right, Ruthie? Yeah, I saw that. You're amazing. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you so much for the support, as always, guys. And I will make a post tomorrow about the blends, and you guys can order on that post. Yes, you are amazing. Oh, Ruthie, thank you so much. I'm glad that you're loving it. That means so much to me. Um, again, that's like a great way to support me, and it's a great way to show that you guys care about the content that I'm creating and want to see me making more of it because I want to be making more of it. I want to be making tons more content. So classes up the ass. I'm excited about that court card class, y'all. I'm going to be working. I'm going to be burning the candle at both ends for the rest of this summer because I want to get this stuff out, you know, come the, the, at least by the equinox, you know, I want to get, ideally I'd like to release stuff this summer, but I'm going to be kind with myself and not give a superhuman level expectation on the timeline. I recognize that I am insufficient and flawed as a human and I have poor time management skills. So <laughs> that's a thing. Um, but yeah, again, thank you guys all so much. I love you all to death. And I hope that this eclipse ushers in something beautiful for you and like dares you to be curious and, and dares you to really like release the stuff that isn't serving you anymore. It's a great time to do it. It's a great opportunity. You know, and if, if you're not ready to do it, that's fine too. Another lap around the, around the cycle is going to teach you a lot too. So you're fine either way. Okay. <laughs> Always know that. Much love. Let's thank you guys all so much for all your love. It it just it means so much to me. I've got like the best audience that interacts, like I think, in the world. Y'all are all so fucking great. Okay, um, toodaloo. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my evening and maybe do a little ritualing actually. Um, I hope you do too. Bye everybody.